Boxing King Media in association with boxer Alexis, trainer of KSI. Uh, how did you think that press conference went? It got a bit heated towards the towards the end of the with the face off. Yeah, I think there's always a lot of respect when it comes to uh, me and David Hay. Obviously, I worked with him for years, and I know Joe from being in the gym, is having having guys spar and stuff. There was always a lot of respect uh, in the room. Um, you know. It was, it was never going to be us that we're going to put hands on anyone, but if that's, if that's the way it's going to go, then that's where it's going to go. Ultimately, we're going to put our hands on him May 13th and put him to sleep. That's the job. I'm not a huge fan of sort of, you know, these sort of, sort of antics, but it is what it is. But that's what gets him up. That's what gets him up. I get it. A lot's being made of Joe being the professional, having nine fights. Obviously, he's been inactive for the last few years. Um, how much of a factor is the fact that, you know, he's had more in-ring experience and how much of that in-ring experience do you rate with the opponents he's had? Yeah, I think experience is one thing, but not being healthy, not being fit, not being sparring uh, regularly, not having good timing, that all counters that. And the idea that if you have ring rust and you're not, you know, you're not you're not sparring on a regular basis. You're not in an active gym. You're not with active fighters. I think that's uh, that's a huge factor to play in in you not being as good as you were. And on that note, JJ is much better than he has been, and he's been he's been getting progressively better. But you know, the, when you're when you're boxing, there's always huge huge um, there's a huge development as a boxer. When you know when you when you start progressing, having your first few fights, you learn and learn at uh, quite a fast rate. When you've retired and you've and you've had your fights, you tend to digress, not progress. So. I think we're in a real good place. Do you think this will be KSI's toughest challenge from all the in-ring experiences had so far? Yeah, definitely. I think the, I think Joe, Joe brings to the table exactly what we want. We want a guy who's competent, who's got a double guard, uh, who can, who's bigger than you, who can put pressure on you. And if we're, we're looking towards uh, Tommy Fury or Jake Paul, we're looking for these fights, then uh, Joe Fournier is a natural stepping stone. He's a natural stepping stone for these guys. Arguably better in some ways. And obviously we've seen rumours of Tommy Fury saying his dad's come out and said that he wants uh, KSI next. John Fury said that. I don't know if you've seen them comments, you know, what do you make of that and how realistic could it be? Could Tommy Fury jump ahead of uh, uh, Jake Paul? Yeah, I think Tommy Fury definitely jumps ahead of Jake Paul. Um, uh, when we take care of Joe Fournier, I think that's an obvious fight to go to. If Jake's not going to take care of a rematch or he's, he's not interested in boxing, then I, I, I don't. we've offered the fight. So I don't see a point in, in waiting in these sort of things. I think Tommy's a really good match for... Uh, for JJ, I think it's a great, great fight, and I think you get a real good idea of where he is and where Jake is, and that's an even bigger build-up for that fight. I think obviously Jake maybe needs to get a, get a wind on, under his belt again as well, get you know get his his stock back up because at the moment, obviously, coming off a loss is not how you how you uh, negotiate a big fight. Do you think that's a Saudi fight or UK? Uh, you know, it's not really my place. I mean, ultimately. You give me the opponent, I train for the opponent and deal with it. When it comes to matching fights, it's not my, uh, it's not, it's not my job. And last question on KSI, obviously he's come out, he's apologised publicly, which a lot of people have accepted, but how much of a distraction is that going to be like, up into the build-up for this fight and just the, the camp in general? Yeah, uh, JJ is a massively humble and lovely human being. Okay, and you know, everything, anything that happens outside of boxing, just in your day-to-day -day life, just with, you know, with your wife, your girlfriend, your kids, if you said something you, know, you didn't mean or any interactions, they're going to have an effect on you 100%. I think our job as coaches and our job as friends and as mentors uh, are, to, are to make sure that that doesn't cross over into the boxing, you know, and really make sure he's, his mind is focused and he's, he's, it's clean. Because if you have a distraction when you're boxing, you know yourself, you know, you're, you're going to get hurt. It's not a place where there can be distractions. So, you know, as much as it you know, is affecting him, it's something that we will try and push through and, uh, and make sure it has, it doesn't, it, you know, it doesn't show on the night. Uh, and we saw yesterday he went to a mosque in Bradford. Uh, how much did he kind of learn uh, about just the culture and people and uh, what, what did he learn from that? Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I wasn't there, so I, I, I can't say, but I do know that he's, he's come back in this morning just sort of humbled by the whole experience and genuinely genuinely wanting to learn and do more which is i think just that's his character and that's his character of rule his character in life is always progression always looking to excel and do better and be better and also you know you know he's he's loved by lots of lots of people so it's about it's making sure that he you know he he holds that value and he holds himself true to, to, to that level of affection that he gets so i'm sure it'll work itself out alexis appreciate your time all the best uh, fight night thank you sir. thank you